Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another ink profile. This is the very last one in uh, the Ink Flight 25 series. So we're doing this beautiful blue down here and I have to get my cheat sheet just to be able to pronounce it anywhere near correctly. So let me get that. Um, okay, so here goes. It is of these words that are on the vial. Uh, the way I understand it from listening to Google Translate is Kiono Otio. And then the actual color name uh, of this color is Aonibi. Well, that's as close as I could come. I had to listen to her several times and I wasn't quite sure, but <laughs> uh, that's as close as I could come. Now, I did have another. Yeah, I had another paper where I wrote down that it said gray tinged with blue. So that was sort of the meaning of the word, gray tinged with blue. And it makes sense when we start to really look at the colors. So let's begin by doing the, the usual water test on this ink. And uh, we'll peek in on um, Azuki Row, which was the last one. Let's see here. I'm all thumbs. <laughs> there it is. The the kind of maroon reddish colored one. This is how the water test came out. I you could see just a little bit. You can faintly read it with your, with the naked eye, but I, on the camera I'm not really seeing it. So it's just tough to read. So it's very um very typical fountain pen ink. So let's see if this one will be or not. Um we'll let it simmer and we'll jump right into the Rhodia Gold book. And we get to take a glimpse at our final finished um, spread here. It looks really nice. The palette is really pretty. And there's just been so much learning, for me anyway, out of this one. And um, I'll talk about this more at the end, but it was it, it's kind of rough for me to choose a favorite out of this one. But I'll talk about that later. Um, here we go. Let's go right on to the, where I wrote in here. And I did... Um, I had it in the broad nib down to here and then in the Lamy fine nib. And it, you know, it's one of the most saturated ones. It's kind of a toss up between the Azuki row and this one. Um, that being the maroon colored one. They're both pretty saturated, but not, nothing to, uh, brag about in that area, but certainly that you can still read it really good and I like that. Um, I found that it was available at Van S for $28 for a 40 mil. And then um, at Penn Chalet, you could get a sample for $4.25. And you, uh, they had low inventory at this $22.40 price. At the time I checked, which was, I think, yesterday or the day before, which means nothing to you if you're watching this video. So approximately maybe uh, February... Uh, 24th that's what I was seeing online so you'll have to check into that um, here's the chromatography I'll hold that up it was you know less than fantastic but it did show a little bit of pink emerging from the blue kind of a pink or magenta so it was still interesting and, and soon we'll have some real strips which will give us more detail um, okay let's we got four more notebooks so let me jump right in here's the CBS caliber one for, uh, Paper made in Vietnam and a very inexpensive paper. It has its pros and cons, but let's see here. We'll find where I put it. Here it is. Um, you know, did pretty decently on there. Certainly in the broad nib. And then uh, just about any ink would probably struggle on this paper in a Lamy Fine nib. So I'm not going to ding it for that, but there it is. <laughs> Um, I, I would like to see it darker, but that's just the way it is. And then let's move right into the Nemesine notebook. Got it here. Okay. Oh, I was doing this on Monday, and I think today's Tuesday. So, <laughs> woo! I guess things have been busy. Okay, so I did some swirlies here. We can kind of see the range of the ink. And uh, wrote with the Moon Man uh, mini glass nib. Now, it was struggling a little from time to time. It seemed dry on here compared to some of the others. So that's that was really interesting to me. I mean, I dipped it the same way and even though it's more saturated, I just kept feeling like things weren't quite the same, but there's a human involved here too, so <laughs> you never know. But that's just, you know, I noticed several places where I kept trying to, you know, readjust because glass nibs are like that, 
but I thought, well, gee, where's that spot that had worked on all the other samples? So, anyway, I, I do like Mondays. I, I jotted down about that. So, you know, it, it looks good on there. Now, let's jump into the Cafe Note. This is uh, Nanami or N Nami uh, Paper Company, Tamoy River Paper. Um, this was written Monday, yesterday, too. I have not written in this yet today, but that's okay. This gives us a sample. Um, I thought it was really nice in the broad nib. I liked it on this paper. And I believe this is 52 weight, but I'm having trouble figuring that, that out. And I went back to try to look and couldn't find it. So it's thin. It's, it's quite thin. So that's all I have to go on right at this moment. And when... Um, so here we are in the broad nib and in the Lamy fine nib, it did, you know, you can see that difference. It, it jumps down. It, it uh, lightens quite a bit on there. But uh, still still quite nice and doable. Um, the problem with this ink for me is that it competes with several other blues that I like. So I'm really not tempted by it at all. Okay, this is the new notebook that, that pen friend Mike sent. The live notes that comes from the pen, uh, from pen gallery. And this is 60, 68 GSM Tamoy River paper. So we're getting to see uh, the difference. And, of course, our first sample happens to be um, the 52 grams. So I'll hold that up in a minute. Maybe we can get a little, little bit of a comparison. But uh, I thought it was really pretty on here. Very smooth. The paper is nice and smooth. <clears throat> a little heavier weight than the 52 is. Anyway, you could see for yourself, there's the broad nib and then the Lamy fine nib. But let's hold up the first paper sample. This is the uh, Tamoy River 52 gram white paper, so it's not exactly the same um, shade of paper. So we have to keep that in mind. But here it is in the broad nib and the Lamy fine nib. Uh, and then, let's see if we can get both of those swatches in. I felt like, in, hmm. Well, they're just about the same as far as, you know, you get some shading and edging on both of them on on this particular ink. It was a little bit more dramatic um, on the maroon colored one on the 68 gram paper. So, huh. Anyway, there we have them both. <laughs> it's a little hard to show you up close like that. Okay, let's go right on to Claire Fontaine. 90 gram French ruled paper. We now have all of them, of course, on, on all of these. So it's kind of pretty to see the whole uh, palette on there. But let me hold this up so you can see it better. And the broad nib and the fine nib. And I thought it looked just fine on here. You know, it's, it's given us a, a good read back and everything. So now for the Rhodia 80 gram dot grid, the white paper. Here we go. This is, you know, that middle of the road, really nice paper. Still up in the nice category, but maybe not as uh, thick as the Claire Fontaine and, and not, not uh, quite as show-offy as the uh, Tamoy River papers are. But it's, it's very good on there. Okay, so Hamlin Optic 90 gram paper. Oh, I meant to be holding these so you could see all of them at once. <laughs> Just real quick here. And then, um, gosh, that had some dramatics on the... Uh, painted on part of the ink there and still I I notice that when I write fast I see little spots where where it's uh, I don't think it's that it's not keeping up it's just an interesting phenomenon maybe somebody knows what that is all about where I see the white <clears throat> I'll probably figure it out one of these days and feel silly but okay here's the Loistrom 1917 dot grid paper and again, we've got all seven of them on here. And here's our ink of the day in a broad nib and then in the Lamy fine nib. The, this paper is quite good for anything that isn't super saturated because it just allows it to show up a little bit better than it does on some of the other papers. And I'll, I, I think I'll be doing a video soon on, on paper, but we'll see. Um, so much ink to cover. <laughs> here's the G. Lalo that came in this month's ink flight. And here's the, today's ink in the broad and the fine nib. Uh, I've used it for a couple of letters. And I find I need to slow down with my writing. And maybe even if I print it, it might be better on this paper. I'm not sure. 
So I'm just kind of still experimenting with it. Okay, and then Office Depot College Ruled Paper. Everybody's on there now, too. <laughs> all, all seven. Here's the broad nib and the fine nib, and that acts a lot like the Loistrum. Quite a bit like it. Now, I haven't been turning it over. I don't remember any, any bleed through. Let me just quickly see if there was. I don't think so on any of this. Um, so, although it's saturated, I didn't see any bleed through on any of these papers that I can recall. Let me see on the final. Okay, maybe tried to where it was laid on so thick. And let's look on the 68. No, I don't I don't even think you could say it tried to bleed through that one. So they really, really behaved well on these papers. Okay, let's check in on our experiment here. Hmm, now that's different. That's, you know, that's showing up fairly well. So that's cool. We'll let it alone though. It needs a little longer to be fair with the other ones. And we'll get our panel, our, uh, whoops, comparison panel. I don't want to melt it with my wet hands. Okay. Let's see if I can get that anywhere near straight. There. Okay. Our ink of the day is in the middle. And uh, I lost my little cheat sheet. So how am I going to say it? <clears throat> Aonibi. Aonibi. There it is. Right in the middle. And, uh, you know, I have quite a few blues, but this isn't really my area that I specialize in. So I pulled out lots of samples from pen friends and, and I started looking at everything I could find that was anywhere near close. And I see a couple on here that look fairly close. Um, I actually, I really kind of feel like the Birmingham Philander C. Knox Old Glory Blue was quite similar. Um... It's it's not exact, exact or anything, but I did think it was quite similar. And for some reason, even this other one that's different, it's clearly not the same, but it gave me that idea. And that was another Birmingham Allegheny Courthouse Justice Blue. It could just be um, the way those inks present, you know, and, and in that muted kind of tone or not chalky, but maybe, uh, maybe they just made me think of it. I'm not sure. And, of course, uh, the Diatromenus uh, Night Blue Sherlock Holmes at first made me think of it, and then I realized there was a distinct difference. I was really surprised that Nemesine Blue Snowball Nebula looked so different. <laughs> oh, mercy. It actually looks like green. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at maybe uh, more gray in this one to make it come out uh, the way it does. Uh, apparently, this one has more green, so that's interesting. Um, I have to be honest, my favorite on this panel is Robert Oster Gracie's. Um, part of that reason is because I know by looking at this that it would make awesome uh, ink art and, you know, it would be great with art. And Robert Oster inks, they just are so good in the nibs. I, I love them. So, but that's just a personal thing. So that was my favorite on this panel. Okay, so hopefully that'll give you a little bit of information. I don't know if you have any of these inks. Some of them are a little bit, not obscure, but not, they're not, um, hmm, it's a different kind of panel today, I recognize. Now, Noodler's Black and Blue seems to me like it's a darker version of this, so that's really pretty, and that, that does some interesting things. Like, I might be tempted if I really, really had to have this shade to go a little darker and, and go for the Noodler's. So, that's just me, though. <laughs> okay, let's get out the, uh, uh, what do I call this? Visual journal, art journal, whatever you want to call it. I am partway through uh, Nick's course, and I'm really loving it. Um, I've got a few things I need to pick up as soon as I get my allowance at the end of the week. So, because I don't have the correct brushes. There's a couple of things I'm missing, but I really was excited about this one. Um, this was just, you know, the, the basic technique that I had been studying from Nick Stewart where you put the water down and then you put uh, a paintbrush with the ink and just let it do its thing, kind of. Um, you come back after it's dried a little and try to put highlights in and I don't know, there's something about that that's pretty interesting. It, it kind of looks like a far off scene or something and then the foreground you create by doing the same thing. You, you make a, a line of water with a big paintbrush trying not to touch the top part and then you come in with a uh, a pen and and the ink and just kind of draw in so um then this was you know kind of 
non-impressive I thought you know but it was interesting anyway I put the water down in a big blob and put some ink on it actually you can hmm, it's interesting comparing these two these were what I thought might be the most saturated of the group and uh, this one was more impressive in terms of how it dried and everything after the art process so hopefully that'll be of interest to you a little bit too so let's get that panel back out here and just kind of look at it because this is it with the this is it with our ink flight uh, for February the ink flight 25 and I'd love to hear what you thought of it it's hard for me to pick a favorite from these um, because these two were saturated enough for me but I, I have other colors in these two groups that I like and then this was so unique um, I don't remember how to say it maybe I never knew but this this green here you're a haro for lack of knowing how to say it. Um, that was really unique and in a broad nib it looked good and I saw it looked really good in um, Waski Squirrel's pen and he sa actually uh, said that was actually a, a steel nib so and not an expensive one so that's really interesting. And I liked the Stone Road of Aguillon as far as uh, what I saw in artwork and on this but I'm not sure I really liked it in a nib. I'd have to work around with some other <laughs> I'd have to see what else would compare to it but it it was really impressive on here I liked it so and then the orange um but I actually think I like the J. Arbonne uh the Coraline to Egypt better than this one for some reason and I I definitely liked um autumn oak so you know like it, it's funny that I'd run into that that there were others other inks that kind of um and th this one just wasn't saturated enough for me for some reason. So, and then I don't know what to say about this one. I can't remember. Let's see. <laughs> we can always... That's what I like about keeping the ink journal. And I think... Um, I, I, I know I'm, I'm definitely not the only one that does this. Uh, but uh, we can go back and say, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. So I remember now that I wasn't really excited about how it looked in the nib. Um compared with how it looked on here where yeah it's bright and it's cool and huh so this was really really interesting um it's getting to where I enjoy these so much it doesn't matter whether I personally like the ink or not I love to compare to other inks and I love to share whatever I find with you guys and I love to read your comments so let me know um you know I guess if I had to pick a favorite one it would probably be this one because I'm not in the market for either one of these and this one was really interesting. So, um, okay, so let me know what you think. And we will soon have another ink flight, but there are lots of other inks that have been waiting for profiling. And so I will begin, um, you know, choosing those. And I know people wanted uh, browns and greens. And I've got some Tasha inks, so don't worry. There's plenty, of, plenty more inks around here, as you know, from some of these videos I've been doing. There's no lack of ink to profile, so I'll see you back here before too long with another one. Bye for now.